Saturday or at nine o'clock. www.messagematro.com stream us live and make us part of your world. And while you're at it, go to Google Play and download the app uh, and get to uh, you know have it on your phone. Bluetooth us, make us part of your digital apps uh, consumption on a daily basis. And talking about things. Uh, of the digital world, we're going to be getting into a conversation that you need to know about uh, because it might help you uh, advance in all sorts of ways, especially uh, when it comes to uh, being visible online and monetizing uh, you know, these platforms that you're on. From desk to the digital desk, Deshni Govinda, uh, formerly known as DJ Roxy, burst into the scene in 207 uh, as the first fem- uh, Indian female DJ in Africa with a number one single weekly mixes on national radio and being sent to Ibiza by X. Uh, she went on to better understand the brand uh, booking her, and so she uh, pivoted to the other side with over eight years' experience in digital marketing and strategy. Stra- strategy, uh, you know, the next chapter in her career required Deshni to be honest and purposeful about what like she do uh, with her life. And uh, uh, you know, she's talking uh, digital media, social media content, influencer <laughs> education amongst uh, millennials as a digital disruptor as well. And uh, she's talking to me. Uh, about that this morning. And maybe we can get some tips as well on how to move to the next level. Hi, Dashni, and thanks for chatting to me this morning. Hey there, Penny. How are you? All right, let's try, let's try that again. Uh, how are you doing, Dashni? I'm good, thanks. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you uh, all right. So talk to me. Uh, you're part of a community called DJ Hype, uh, okay, which is consulting brands uh, on all sorts of exciting things in the world of uh, in, the, in, in digital world. What is DJ Hype? Yeah, sure. I'm really passionate about DJ Hype. I actually have a day job, so I'm at corporate. And on the side, I just found, because I work with influencers every single day, I'm at AB InBev, I found that I needed to have an outlet to grow a community. We have big brands, but a lot of influencers want help pass their campaign. So I started DJ Hype merely as a WhatsApp group. It grew into a website. Now we have a podcast. And essentially, I work with influencers, just helping them understand their creator mindset. So sometimes they want to know, how do I get verified to even, should I be placing ads, you know? And I've been doing it for like the f- past four years. And I just feel like my mentality, each one teach one. Because we're in the boardroom, we shouldn't be keeping these secrets, right? We should be helping uh-huh. creators. So that's what I'm kind of passionate about. And that's what the Digi Hype movement is kind of about. Awesome stuff. Yeah, that's probably one of the most asked, asked questions. How do I get verified? I, mean, you know, I have over 35 years, 20, 30 years of experience in entertainment. Um, and I, I saw people being, uh, you know, verified. And I was like, oh, who's that? How do they get verified? Um, I, I, that's what I would like to ask. I'd like to get verified on Twitter. Uh, on Facebook. What do I have to do? How does it work? No, for sure. And I think the first thing to understand is that verification doesn't always mean it's validation, right? And I think a lot of influencers, especially on the trajectory of road to 1 million, think that if they get the blue tick immediately, you know, the bags start dropping and and the bookings come in. I think what brands are looking for, and particularly in my space, we look at authenticity. We want to understand, do you know who your community is? Are there fake followers? So I know it sounds a bit wishy-washy. The number one advice I'll give you, focus on the quality of your engagement and the content you're putting out. Brands don't just look at that tick and think, oh, that's why I'm booking someone. But let's say that you do want the tick because there might be many pennies out there or dishnies, right? I do think that it is important for you to use your power and your voice online and tag the platforms. We've seen many influencers tag Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. And it's conversations I've been having with the platform on the back end as well. I've said to Facebook and Twitter, we need to have a more active presence in Africa, particularly South Africa, because especially DJs, they're constantly asking this question. So know that change is coming, hopefully soon enough. But until then, definitely look at always making sure that you do monthly sweeps. Look to see if anyone's kind of, you know, being an imposter with your name and get your team on it. Don't be blind to this kind of stuff because it is a bit dodgy when someone wants to use your handle. Yeah, you know, it all sounds nice when everybody says get your team behind it. But truth be told, I mean, I'm very blessed in the fact that I existed, uh, you know, influentially and impactfully before social media. Mm-hmm. I am existing during, and lo and behold, if social media ends, I know that I'll still be influential. Um, so the thing is, uh, not everybody has teams. Yes. Status. 
yes. and that are working on their digital branding strategy. Uh, people just go on Twitter, set up a page, uh, and then they do the stuff that they do. Um, and then people come for example, and I, I, I will use myself as an example because it just makes it, you know, I don't know other people's stories. I can tell you people say, oh, you know, but you have to do this and do that. And I'm like, uh, but I'm not being myself. And then you touch into the whole authentic thing. I'll make an example. Somebody says, oh, you're a mother, you're a celebrity, but we never see your kids. I'm like, yeah, but what has that got to do with anything? Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. know, like, do you want to work with me or are you interested in my kids? Uh, you know, and that doesn't mean that uh, I'm not an advocate on children. So I'm like, actually, I speak on a lot of stuff on children and rights and whatever. I just don't blast my kid. They're not like uh, little guinea pigs and models that I use there. Yes. Um, and, and, and now, there's a marketer's mind and there's a perception of what they think somebody who is an advocate, uh, you know, or an influencer. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to run away from that word, mm. uh, you know, because someone who's influencers and they can have impactful conversation in that space that they have to. Be a certain way. And I'm like, but if you read through the line, you, mm. somebody posts their kids, but they don't know that they child maintenance or children's rights. Um, and they don't even know that you can't just blast your kids like that uh, because there's, you know, uh, digital laws or uh, the publications. You know what I mean? That, yes. that the conversation is more layered. So now I don't want to be engaged in trying to defend my position so that I can get into a kid. I'd rather say, just keep it. Um, uh, how, how do we shift and get maybe the marketers uh, to understand the reality and, and to move away from selling perception in the age of authenticity, that could not be true. That, that is not true. Yeah, no, I absolutely love your question. And can I tell you, I wish more people had the mindset that you have, because I think there's a big misunderstanding between being an influencer and being influential. I can resonate with the fact, because I've long been following you, that you've been here before, obviously, as we would say, Instagram popped off. So the first thing I would say to a lot of the newer guys on the scene, don't just believe blindly that because you have a team, that's what you're selling, right? You always need to be true to your narrative. On the marketer side, and I can say it because I sit on the other side of the boardroom, I can tell you that there's been a shift. I'm not saying every company does this. We pride yeah, ourselves yeah. in the fact that yeah. we actually bring the influencer inside, in-house. We have conversations with them. We want to understand them. And actually, we co-write the brief together, right? And I've done this in the last three organizations I've been in. And can I tell you, one of the most impactful things is that you realize that what you want and what the influencer can offer you are totally worlds apart. And sometimes, beyond just what you can pay them, we call it a toolkit approach. Maybe said influencer wants to go to a certain conference or to a Tomorrowland. You can, as a brand, can have access to that and offer it. So my advice to anyone listening, don't just be very transactional about it. You need to be like Penny, be vocal and have a seat at the table and don't just sit there. Actually just start commanding what do you want to actually kind of execute with your campaign. Definitely don't just hide behind your team. That's not where things are going, especially here now with COVID. COVID times, right? We all need to be yeah. entrepreneurial. I must say, uh, uh, stay on the line. We're continuing our chats, and I'm chatting on the line with Dashni Gavinder, uh, you know, former, uh, you know, DJ, but she's doing some amazing things with DJ Hype and really, really unpacking um, and shifting perceptions uh, and questions that we need answers to. When we come back, continue. Oh, Reflection of who we are, 
Uh, you know, I always laugh when I see on Twitter South Africans versus Kenyans or South Africans versus Nigerians or South Africans versus Black American. And then there's some like hectic four parts and you're just like, oh, who's leading the South African pack? You're all embarrassing us. Um, Deshni uh, is talking to me. She said that DJ Hype, a community during uh, her time consulting for brand teams to share information on all things digital. Uh, and it's a network uh, that she shared with us earlier on that has grown in so many ways. Okay, so Deshni, from um, being a you know a personality yourself um, and then transitioning to behind the scenes, you're able to connect in so many ways, uh, you know, with brands uh, and also also give them an insight, um, you know, of being uh, you know in the forefront as a personality yourself as an influencer, so to say. Because a lot of times you find that people who sit in the world uh, of branding and marketing have no understanding of the world of the personality. And the personality also doesn't have an understanding of how, uh, you know, the marketers and the decision makers uh, deal. And then the strategy just misses each other. And then there's the people who are supposed to consume this content. And then they, everything gets lost in, in, in translation. How do you bridge the gap? Or how should the gaps be bridged? No, I love this question. I think, you know, sometimes we laugh at that meme. Wearing sneakers to work doesn't mean you're cool and culturally woke right so the one thing I've always kind of just prided myself on the fact that I can't just pay lip service I mean I started at Accenture from there I moved to Diageo and now I'm at AB InBev did a bit at Heineken throughout you know bringing culture into the boardroom was important the likes of Skipani you know Slick on Life if they have ideas to pitch I'm not saying that it's always a green tick but I remember Bonga and Sia saying to me yo Dish like the fact that we're coming through these doors and we're presenting and pitching it's a two-way street we're learning about these brands as well earlier this year we went to facebook head office i kind of got like i would say i don't want to say the best rappers i don't want to get into a battle but you know the 10 of the most prolific hip-hop space uh, people in the space and we just sat with the corporate team and we chopped up like what do brands need to understand from culture so it's little things like that and for my counterparts that are sitting now as well in corporate all i am saying is give the guys an opportunity to get through the door and at least pitch let us not just shoot down ideas because you never know what could come through so yeah let's not pay lip service and say yeah i'm doing it for the culture of course you know i put so and so on but what are are you actually doing for young black owned businesses so these are little things that i've kind of made as a promise to myself and i think on the other side to the guys that want to get through those boardrooms this is an unpopular opinion but guys go where the attention is get on that linkedin steez let me tell you all your brand managers are sitting on LinkedIn and they are there every single day. So you want to connect with them. Don't try and get in the DM of Instagram. They're not trying to do business via there. So that's my biggest okay. little secret tip. Okay. So, all right. So that's that's very that's very interesting. So I remember when LinkedIn, I mean, I guess that's also, um, you know, I, I sit in a very privileged position of like when new things start out, you're there. I remember when LinkedIn started, I think I do have a LinkedIn account, but I remember thinking, ah, when it started, it was so boring and corporate. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, that's it. And then, you know, Facebook, yes. And then I was one of those first people to reach 5,000 over and then you must move from. Then they changed the thing. And then I was like, ah, oh, Facebook is exhausting. And then I left it. Okay, now I'm back uh, on Facebook because I understand Facebook is a community. Twitter is an ego trip. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, and Instagram uh, is a show off. And I'm like, oh, I need that. Um, you know, but I see all of them as social media platforms and communication tools. So um, I want you to stay on the line because I still have a few things that I want to wrap up. But I'm going to go to the news, uh, you know, take a break and then come back and continue with you. Because I just think, um, you know, there's people who are starting out and there's people of me who are ahead of the wave, but at the same time, want to unlock value. Mm. I just want my money, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's really exactly. what I want. I'm not interested in all the other nonsense. Um, so let's come back and continue this chat. Um, after we catch up, uh, it's called in your presence. Twenty-four minutes to go before the hour, ten o'clock, and this is the continental hour. Uh, you know, Africa matters. Uh, the diaspora hour. Uh, you know, Black Lives Matters for this current generation. But trust you me, the story of African people has been, uh, you know, evolving in so many ways, and we are in the digital phase. Uh, we are the new. We are the frontier that everybody's talking about. I mean, we're a fascination for the world in terms of like how COVID has affected us. Uh, there were horrible predictions, and look at us now. Um, and you know, if you've been following uh, things about the continent and what's been saying by the World Economic Forum uh, in the last fifteen years, you know that they've been saying Africa is the future. One, because we've got the youngest population. All we need 
is our technology to be up to scratch and you won't touch us. And it's exciting times. Um, so I'm talking on the line uh, with Dashni Govinda, uh, straight into me. Uh, and as I'm talking, I was thinking about that young man who's just been appointed the Minister of Technology in Rwanda. Did you guys see the story? Uh, Deshni, did you see the story? Yeah, I know. And exactly to what you're saying. I mean, it's not about Africa, the future. I mean, literally, look at that, right? Oh. Uh, that was so exciting. I was like, wow, 19-year-old. He's like, he's advising the president about technology, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Rwanda. So let's let's get back to, to where we are because, uh, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, it doesn't matter where you sit and it's not even an age thing. Uh, social media is such a powerful thing. And you can use it for positive change, and we've seen it in so many ways. And I like uh, what you said earlier on, like it's about authenticity. And I think uh, we, we can agree that there was a time where um, the marketers themselves, you know, didn't know what authentic, they were not really tapping into authenticity. But I think COVID came and shook everything. We are not interested in how many Louis Vuitton bags you have. We really are not. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and the more you post your cars, uh, the more SARS is interested in your business. <laughs> uh, but more than anything else, how are you using your power, influence, economically, profits for social change some way or the other? So even brands, some brands have been caught, uh, you know, uh, flat-footed because they, didn't, they don't know how to react to gender-based violence because they don't have a strategy on it. Um, they don't know how to react to COVID because... Um, they were like so detached from issues. Uh, they don't know how to re-communicate uh, the um, CSI projects uh, because it's, it shows that they've not been doing the work. They've been doing lots of lip service. But social media has been used as a tool to expose, to fight, to bring them down, to hold them to account. But when you're a personality, it's not like you have a board of directors uh, who can do that. It's not like you have consumers. Oh, yes, you know, there's tours and then there's penny must fall for a day but you know how do you get yourself as a brand as an influencer uh, you know or someone as influential in that space to really really use these tools uh, that are digital to really make you know long lasting impacts yeah, no, for sure. I think a lot of people get caught up in the terminology. So people say, oh, you know, I don't have a strategy. I need a strategy. But sometimes it's just about a working plan for here and now. The first thing I would say is that you need to recognize that what do you stand for and what don't you stand for and be very honest. I mean, I'm not going to call people out, but we've seen Instagram influencers jump from, you know, uh, backing this cause to wearing this to not wearing that. And of course, your followers are not blind. They see it. So you have that honest conversation conversation with yourself, not even your, I'm doing air quotes, your team and ask yourself, what will I back? What won't I back? And then also you need to also make money. This is a fact. We're not hiding behind yes. it. It's yes. likes yes. and shares are not going to pay the rent, right? So I think that when you understand what is your retention strategy, the biggest thing I would say to guys right now, owned versus earned platforms. So what I mean, do you remember back in the day that thing called MySpace? Yeah, it's not here anymore. Yeah. We've been hearing how yeah. TikTok might, may not be banned. India just lost it. Think about yourself. You're sitting in India right now. You're making X amount a month out of TikTok and then the next day it's gone. So don't just base your entire influence on a platform. Get your website, get an ebook out, get your own podcast, whatever it is. Get that money straight to your own bank and not through a third party and then keep your channels as just a means for you to reach more people so really if you want to take a saturday a weekend sometimes get a best friend sit down and say man what am i doing with all of this ish that i'm putting out like am i driving change and am i actually bringing some money in because let me tell you that is why some influencers will just be on one platform they know they're making money they know they're being purposeful and that's it you don't need to be everywhere you just need to be somewhere and actually make a difference Okay, we take a quick break. I'm continuing my chat on the line. We're talking DJ Hype, uh, uh, of course, with uh, Deshni Govinda uh, on the line with me. We're back with more after this. Okay, stop. And responsibilities uh, that uh, okay, the grandparents yeah. would wrap up with yeah. of their child have on the You should child. actually check out our YouTube channel. Yeah. I advocate for change of mindset, uh, you know, in languages and everything. So I, I will never say uh, that men are the only ones uh, who must maintain because I know that both parents must maintain. So I'm, never, I'm not going to say, yeah, yeah, then men doesn't maintain. No, 
Even women must menstruate. Just look after your children. The sex was nice. We don't care whether you came or you didn't. And there's a child that came out of it. Just take responsibility. Oh, you still want to come back to me. You're like, you're like, all right, uh, so I'm ch- uh, wrapping up my chat with uh, with Deshni. Deshni, I'm really fascinated by uh, you know your way of approach to things and how you do things. Um, and uh, the world is we are global, uh, you know, but we we have to act local, uh, you know, and uh, think global and make sure that we take ourselves authentically uh, to the world. And we're also living in a time where you know we have to draw uh, from our authentic stories. Our culture plays a big role, uh, you know, and and things and things like that. So, um, Boyu was telling me that your YouTube channel is, is, is exciting. I must say. <laughs> so, uh, earlier on, I was talking about how, uh, because of, you know, I've been doing what I've been doing, um, you know, for as long as I have. And there were times, I mean, I remember teaching people how to get on Twitter and work when I used to work at Metro FM. <laughs> and I mean, I'll tell you some of the people who I show them to. They're like, ah, what is this? I was like, get on. And, you know, <laughs> and literally, you know, help them sign up. Um, and then... I remember Facebook as well as I said, I had, you know, my numbers went up and then I it had to move to a community and all that stuff and it got complicated and I had one account and then I had to go back. Um, and earlier when I had you talking about having a meeting with Facebook and Facebook is linked obviously with Instagram. Um, and then there's YouTube. So, um, you know, at, at the same time, we was talking about your, your YouTube channel and how powerful it is. So I've been holding my breath about a YouTube channel. I have an account. Like I'm a Google child, like literally my <laughs> life. Google saved my life. I tell them, you know, I was like, I used to be so um, annoyed by me- media generally before Google came because then I could tell my own narrative. And then when Twitter came, I can tell people off the way I think because I wanna, I'm one of those people who people used to say nonsense about me and I couldn't even respond on radio because my contract wouldn't allow me to and it caused me depression. And then when Twitter came, I would just blast. <laughs> uh, you know, I would just blast. And they're like, you, what is this? I was like, yeah, I've been watching you talk nonsense. So... But I also saw people who never had an opinion or a voice before Twitter mess up their lives on Twitter <laughs> and Instagram. People I respected, and I'll be like, oh my God, I thought you were smart. <laughs> I saw them falling apart and act the fool. Um, in wrapping up, um, you know, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go that way. But, and, and can I tell you? I'm also too spoiled because I have friends who sit in those places. Like some of my friends work for YouTube, some of my friends work for Facebook and Twitter and all these places. And I'm just thinking, guys, why do you let people do the things that they do? Uh, how should we approach? How should I approach YouTube? Yeah. You know? First, yeah, firstly, I would say stop holding your breath and get on that YouTube train, please. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a question that everyone wants to know. Yes, 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 you can make bank. Literally no cap. There are some South African influencers, I, I will not reveal names, that are making 60,000 a month through AdSense. So let me tell okay. you. The I know that Michelle is making lots of money. I know that Kifibu is making money. I know that... Um, <laughs> but yeah, and I think... Reveal, I know. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the thing is, okay, so let, let's say you're not even after the paycheck at first. Number one, reputation. Guess what? YouTube is owned by Google. Every time you Google yourself, you want cool ish to come up. So get on that. The more content you put out, the more you're discoverable. The second thing, as well, it is so simple. You know, we talk about opportunity in Africa. I follow young creators all the time, both for my work as well as personally. You literally can just upload from your iPhone. It is so simple. So there is no barrier to entry. And then thirdly, to what you were saying, everyone has a platform. How many people have been rejected by the massive networks out there? You know what I mean? You now can have your own show, whether it is audio and visual or you want to become the next Benang, whatever. You can get onto YouTube and you can drive that narrative. So yeah, and then lastly, just because I know there's a lot of uh, confusion around this, you need to get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Tweet me, I will give you advice for free once you hit that threshold you start seeing ads on your videos even if you're making 500 rand a month guys that is something it's a good start yeah, yeah that's something okay um you know I, I i'd like to have another conversation with you later on so we can talk about patron crowdcast mighty networks and all those other apps that are very important uh, and how what's the next wave because 
We're still dealing with YouTube. The world is also getting ahead on other things. And where are the other apps coming from the rest of the continent, uh, you know, that maybe we need to know about? Uh, so let's keep these lines open, Dashni. Thank um, you. Have a, and have a great day, Freda. You what too. are your handles? That Dash Everywhere. T-H-A-T-D-E-S-H. Yeah. Or you can Google me. You'll find my YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. Enjoy chatting to you. Uh, that's Dashni Governor chatting to me on the line from DJ Hype.